What's going on, YouTube? Alphonse is Team Grade Lock here with another episode of Team Grade Lock Unlocks Week. We're going to be going over the latest Card Fight Vanguard episode, Ride 187, as well as results from our local and any more news that we have from Team Grade Lock to you, our subscribers. If you haven't seen the episode yet, please pause the course of the video, go watch that episode, and then come back right here so we can discuss about it. Of course, if you don't want to do that, please click on the link in the description down below to provide some results from our local. So, Ride 187, Aichi's Awakening, or is it? We start off where we left off in the last episode, where we see Neve pull off a pretty broken Superior Legion ride with the Metal Borgs by soul charging what looks like to be three Metal Borgs and already going into Legion right on top of that. I'm not sure how I got the four cards in the, in the drop zone, I'm not totally sure about that. But, give or take, we get to see him at Grade 3 while Aichi is still on his Grade 1 ride. And how we end up skipping to Aichi riding the grade 3, I have no idea. But in that case, it seems that Neve really couldn't get the job done, especially getting two twin drives before Aichi gets to ride to grade 3. And of course, seeing how Neve is, you know, trying to act noble, chivalrous, as what Sarah mentioned in the last episode, it seems that he would have this game in the bag. However, Aichi is still, you know, unfazed, un, you know, unintimidated, whatever you want to call it. But, it seems that Neve is trying to pull a Masaki here by trying to ask Aichi, or at least tell him, hey, you know, you remember, in your heart, your friends, your mates, anything that you can do, in order to try and throw Aichi not only off of his reverse game, but to try and bring him back, trying to fulfill the name of the episode. Granted, we get to see a flashback, but, Thing is though, Aichi, he's struggling, but the reverse is really taking form. And especially when we get to see Aichi perform Legion, we see this. Now to have Imaginary Plane Dragon do a Triangle Arc for a simple Counter Blast 2, and you get the lock unit for every unit in the center column. Henceforth, Legion gets you the Triangle Lock. Wow! You outclass Infinite Zero, you outclass Darn Stadium, which is the promo that we'll be getting at this upcoming regional tournament, as well as even the Link Joker Legion unit that came beforehand, Star Vader, Garnet, Star Dragon. And the skill in this guy? You only get to lock two units, a front row and a back row, when it performs Legion once. The guy can do Counter Blast 2 and try to lock you for two turns straight. Wow! And at this point, once Aichi performs Legion, gets a triangle lock, it seems that Neve would be dead. Like, he, he's literally going to be going two turns straight with just a Vanguard attack. Legion is pretty good. 20k by himself? Alright, awesome. But then he pulls out this crazy ass combo with the two remaining rearguard slots that he has left. So we see this adorable looking trigger, who happens to go by the name, Metaborg Operator Karika, she soul charges herself, gives 2 units on the vanguard circle, plus 3k, 6k total. And then we get to see Miss Ghost give plus 8k to the units, 4k each. So, pretty much we have ourselves a 40k swinging vanguard by itself, no boosters. So as valiant as Neve's efforts were, it would all end in vain. As Aichi, just like how Rati had when Nasaki attacked her with CEO Yggdrasil, he had enough 10k shields and a draw trigger in hand to give a 50k shield value against Neve's 40k attack. And the thing is, we didn't even see the twin drive, so I was secretly hoping he would get a double trigger or something like that. But of course, Aichi would win the battle in the end. When he dealt that 6 damage to Neve, we actually saw something that we haven't seen before. We get to see Neve cast judgment upon himself. And through that, I actually thought that the reverse movement would come back. As in... Literally, Aichi would reverse Neve, and that would in turn set another Link Joker invasion all over again. But fortunately, that didn't happen, because afterwards, we see Neve see Aichi. He actually kind of comes back to his senses. You see the eyes all of a sudden come back with the pupil, the iris, all of that. And Neve, taking it like a man, he actually, you know, would get up, help Aichi to his throne, and keep him sealed. Unfortunately, though, we get to see one of the seals lowered since Neve was defeated. And that leaves us with the next episode, which so happens to be Sarah versus Rati. Now, of course, after this whole season, and especially recently, I would love Sarah to win this next battle and give Rati the judgment that she oh so deserves. Because seeing Sarah actually try and take advantage of all of this, 
it's just wow. It actually seems that he even thought Kai and Takuro were unworthy of Link Joker's presence or even, you know, as affiliation. And when he met Aichi, of course he was inspired by him. But he certainly reveals that there is a reverse presence within him. And that is the key that led to Sarah's greed that he thinks he is the true Link Joker paragon. That he would represent this clan to the very end. And Rachi, of course, she is just, you know, distraught because, you know, she thought that all four Cross Knights were brought here for a reason, that Aichi would help them, not only save them from this reverse invasion, but from just it happening again. And Sarah, all the things are coming into place. Well, maybe not all the things, because we get to see at least Kai, Naoki, and Galliard desperately trying to get out of this ice cage. And as Rati and Sarah begin their match, in which that we see Sarah now rocking the Link Joker starter, which is a new one I haven't seen before, we get to see at least a very interesting fight between Shadow Paladins and Link Joker. I want to see how exactly that's going to match up. Because especially, Link Joker has some stuff to lock, but Rati also has some very good field disruption as usual. As we've seen in the in, in fact, all of our battles in this season. He's been practically unbeatable, hopefully up until this point. But then when we go back to that little ice cage, the butler is just, you know, laughing his ass off at how you are desperately trying to do so. And as Neve was battling Aichi, they just find themselves trapped in there for what pretty much seems like an eternity. But then we get to see them, boom, we see the ice cage all of a sudden break. And we hear two familiar voices. In the time, we see Ren and we see Leon. Two people I have never really expected to see again, but damn, I am so glad to see them now. Because now that all hell is breaking loose, Sarah trade the Quatronites, what else is going to happen? How can Kai, now can Galliard even escape? Well, let's bring in the antagonists for seasons 1 and 2. Where we see Aqua Force and Shadow Paladin band together and help these guys, or at least Kai, Naoki, and Galliard out of this ice cage. And that's it for the episode. I hope that you guys enjoyed this little episode breakdown. Of course, if you I missed anything or you'd like to point out anything in the episode, feel free to comment down below and get a conversation started. And now, let's get to the results of our local. So to start things off, the Friday Tag Team Tournament, I was not there, so feel free to fill in any missing details. Uh, the people that topped there, it was a three-way tie. One of the teams I knew was uh, Henry and Alex, and the other two new teams... They were, in fact, yes, new. Uh, I'm not sure if there was a first time at uh, Game On, or maybe I haven't seen them myself, but feel free to fill in the missing details in the comments down below. Then let's move over to Saturday, where now the Bermuda recital or concert <laughs> is in full swing. Uh, we had at least uh, 13 to 14 uh, players in there. Which was uh, pretty good. I was running the Dimensional Robos as usual. Uh, first round, I went up against um, Andre. He was a new guy. He was actually running the trial deck of, um, I think, Eradicators. And I managed to beat him because of the break ride. Uh, game two, uh, round two, I mean, I faced up against Alex, and he was running the Avengers. Um, he got great on both games. One at zero, and the other one around like, at one or two. It was really, but it was one sided. I couldn't. And I was hitting triggers too, so it was just, it, it, it was completely one-sided, but I feel bad. Like, I really don't want to win against a person that's in grade lock. A win's a win, but still, that's, that's like the worst feeling in the world. Um, cause especially, like, when you're on the receiving end, it feels like crap. But when you're on the person that's actually dealing the damage and stuff, it's just... It's it's real. You're kicking a dead horse. Um, then round three, I went up against Dex. He was running the Bermuda Triangles. He was actually running Alk with uh, Mir, and Alk, he was able to get a lot of draw power out of it. I really didn't know how to do it. In game one, I was getting triggers out the ass, but I really couldn't capitalize on it. He had the hand to guard every single attack that I had. I keep thinking like, wow, oh, this is I can't block everything. I even when I called the heal trigger, I knew I was still gonna lose because I didn't have that much field presence. I didn't have break right after break right. And the thing is, though, in game two, he wasn't getting his, you know, grade threes either. Alk wasn't showing up, but he was still, you know, making the right moves, calling it, and just, you know, 
knowing when to, you know, really attack or like manipulate anything. He just had the draw power. I couldn't be able to overcome that. Uh, in uh, round four, I went up against Henry, and he was running the Eradicators. Um, game one, I was grade locked at one, and then uh, game two, he used the Tempest Bolt, and he retired my whole field. I couldn't really do much about it because I had to either rush him down that hopefully he wouldn't use it or just, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm really going to have to eat that. And he didn't break ride. And thing is, though, that's totally okay. He left his field kind of open because his Vanguard was swinging in for a crazy number that I either had to perfect guard or just take the hit and hope the guy doesn't get, like, crits. So I went up 2-2. Two and two. That's all right. Um... Hopefully, I'll be able to play a new deck uh, this coming Saturday, which will be the Bermudas. Um, I'm probably gonna, it's either gonna be Iori or Raid at this point. Uh, I already completed at least most of it. I have two perfect guards, two quintet walls, uh, the four realms, the four Slaneys, four 12k attackers, and then I have one of Iori and one of Raid. And I'm probably gonna need either three of either one. Hopefully, I'll be able to pick some up this week, and then I'll finally be able to play a brand new deck this coming Saturday. Um, then on Saturday we actually had some buddy fight stuff going on. Um, what I actually want to do first is to actually get the unlock the week so I'll, I'll report on the buddy fight tournament results as usual but I guess uh, for some people that have requested they will actually want to see a buddy fight episode breakdown. I will record that in a different video that will be uploaded later this week. So I was thinking maybe, hopefully in a few days now, I'll be able to do at least a, just a vlog or about just the Buddy Fight episode as well as any new Buddy Fight news that popped up in uh, you know the past few days that I can report on. Aside from that, um, the Buddy Fight tournament I entered in with uh, the Dungeons Arrows, I went 1 and uh, 2. First round, I went up against Chris L. He was running the Dungeon uh, World Hybrid with the Adventurers and the Enemies. Uh, he too old me because I couldn't really recover from his utility. He had, you know, the mission cards, he had, uh, you know, continues. He was just re refilling his whole field, and it was just, you know, hit after hit after hit. I couldn't really do much about it, so, you know, I had to suffer, uh, that much. Then, the next thing that happened was, uh, I went up against, uh, uh Adam. He was running Ancient World, he was running the, uh, not Seeger, he was running the, just the Rainbow Dragon, I think. And he managed to do the counters at the right time. He was just, you know, filling the field. He was preventing that destruction. I couldn't really do anything to get over it. He was really counterattacking and, like, leaving my field wide open for an attack. And I just didn't have the numbers in order to hit that high. And then I went up against um, a different person. I think his name was John. Uh, he was running a Katana World Trial deck. I managed to beat him because uh, he... I don't think he had any of his impact cards. Uh, I think he was running Ninjas. Um, he was just using Tsukikage to get, you know, 3 damage in on me. I managed to at least, you know, kill with fire, divine protection. And I had dangerous views to help out with that. So 1 and 2, I guess it was, at least for me, not too good of a week at the top at all. But hopefully that will change when I try out some new things or I make some new changes. Aside from that, um, in terms of Vanguard news, I know that uh, I'm only going to be at the Bushi Road uh, regional event in Albany just that Saturday. After that Saturday, I won't be able to do it because, of course, like I said before, LSAT stuff. Um, I have an LSAT class on Sunday that I have to attend to. So unless I can enter in the way switch real quick and, you know, like, if I scrub out, I scrub out, but I want that play that and stuff like that. Uh, in terms of the other news for Team Gradelock, uh, along with this video, after that, I will upload the uh, results from not only the Extra Booster uh, for the Divas Duet. I managed to get two on eBay. And it's going to be looking pretty good. So, uh, you know, I'll upload that hopefully by tomorrow. And then from then, we're going to give you a deck profile in Buddy Fight. Uh, one of my friends, Ryan, who actually helped me out with uh, the Dungeon Terror build. He actually has his uh, Magic World Wizards that he would like to uh, show off for you guys. And that will be up, uh, you know, within the next few days. And we're going to feature a Casual Series match. And the Casual Series match, of course, is going to feature his Wizards deck going up against maybe, you know, Dragon World. And uh, Josh is actually going to be piloting uh, Jackknife. So you have that little schedule to look forward for this week. In terms of uh, actually trying to get out and record more stuff, um, I know that we're trying to schedule something for Wednesday where we can actually record maybe a Domino Paris video, which has been at least months overdue. I feel very bad. He probably is pissed off at this week <laughs> that we, we haven't really been able to get together. But I guess the good thing is that we're actually at least putting the schedule, getting ready, putting the content together, and we're going to have some new changes. 
So we're going to see what we can do in terms of like the pro style matches. It's just that the only problem is we don't have a consistent, you know, we don't have like consistent groups of people coming out every week. And a lot of times, you know, of course, all the members, you know, we got vibes of our own. We got, you know, whether it's jobs, you know, playing games, you know, other agendas. But of course, we always want to try and see what we can do for the YouTube channel. And we'll be more than happy to, you know, listen to any other suggestions you may have. Um, we're going to try a different twist on the casual series as well. Um, we're going to feature Ryan's commentary throughout that whole uh, casual series match. So instead of like maybe hearing out some of the plays, you get to hear, okay, this is what I have in my hand. And provide a little bit more insight as to what are the moves being made and what are the reactions. Now, instead of giving both players commentary, I would just start off with just having maybe that one player to give commentary over how that match is dictated. Therefore, you at least get one perspective. I feel that if you maybe have like two players giving commentary at the same time, it can be either a bit overwhelming or, you know, somebody's going to talk over the other. Uh, and that's what it looks like for this week, pretty much. So expect some new content. I'm going to do another vlog for the buddy fights, so don't you worry about that. Uh, and any other buddy fight news that uh, would pop up soon, such as, you know, the uh, boost of set four and... Maybe the sneak peek, because after seeing that Matt, that actually would probably be a big, big thing at game on. Uh, and that's it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, you know, I know that it's a little bit shorter than uh, the usual, but I want to. I don't want to like keep you here for like 17 minutes straight. You know, if you know, like sometimes the vlogs are like you know pretty short, but other times I can just talk on and on and on. But if you guys feel like, you know, if there's any other ways for me to make this vlog a bit better, feel free to comment down below as well. Uh, I know I've been trying to incorporate the use of screenshots without being too overwhelming. Uh, you know, I, I'm trying to do a little bit of that, trying to put, you know, more effort, some narration, and just evolve how this channel goes on. And that's it for me. My name is Alphonse Zeus of Team Grey Dog. I hope that you enjoyed this week that I've unlocked for you. And take care, guys. I'll see you all next time.